Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I am in Elginac State Park. You can see the St. Clair River there. A freighter just went by. I'll put a picture in here so that you can see it up in the corner. Um, the freighters go by pretty frequently. The water here is so turquoise blue. It is such a deep river. Well, obviously, if freighters go by, but I'm camping here. There aren't a lot of people here yet, but we're here in our trailer. My husband went to work today because we're so close to home. So I'm just sitting here painting. Today, I already finished one card, and this is going to be my um, Father's Day card. And I'm going to be working on an anniversary card today, and I thought that you guys might like to see exactly what I am going to paint. I'm planning to do some peas, and there is rhyme to my reason. There goes the rangers. Um, but anyway, uh, you'll see what I'm doing as it goes along. I'm going to be doing peas, and... The P's will be happy, P-E-A, anniversary, and also that we are two P's in a pod, and that's going to be my anniversary card. So, I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do some flowers, some blooms, and then a pea pod as well, so. Okay, so I hope you can see this okay. I have the um, drawing on here. I tried to do it a little bit darker, but I was using my 2H pencil. And excuse the bouncing, it's not my it's not my N Plein Air Pro that bounces. It is the gooseneck on this thing. It is so flimsy. I should have brought my other one, but my other one needs to set up under a thick tabletop and it screws on. And this one is a pinch clip, but this gooseneck is bouncy as all get out. So just bear with me if it bounces a little bit, I apologize. Somebody thought it was my M Plein Air Pro that bounces and it is very sturdy. But in order to keep the gooseneck from bouncing, I've added a couple of boards here, and then I also put something underneath the back clip so that it doesn't pull. Otherwise, it does pull on the plastic stand, so. So let's get going here. I've got my water. I've just got to put that under my, under my uh, setup here. I've got my stand here for my brushes. Um, but, and I'm gonna put it on the table beside me, but I also have this over here on the side of my stand where I can put brushes here, and then also on the tray that I have not put up because I like to have the extra room for my painting surface. So I'm just gonna pull out the brushes I want today, and that will be my number five Rubloff. Uh, round my number eight silver black velvet. They're both about the same size. The silver black velvet has more of a point, so I may go with that today. And then I'm also going to be using my number three Kalinsky mix brush by Rubloff. These are the three. If I need something very small, I'll probably use my Rosemary and Company Series 307 size one synthetic brush. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so that you guys can see me paint. I wanna make sure that I get the whole thing in though so that I don't screw up and have you guys not seeing me paint at the bottom because I did that on my, on my doodle and sketch video, which was a bummer, so I had to cut a lot of it out. But it didn't make it very long then either, so that's nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my silver black velvet here. And I think I'm going to use a little sap green to get started. Actually, I think the sap green I have on my M Plein Air Pro palette is a Cotman sap. And then I'm going to also grab my sap green from my Daniel Smith because they're very, it's a lot darker as you can see down here. This one is Daniel Smith, that one is Cotman. They look very different on the page, so. I'll start with the cotton because it's more of a yellowy sap. And I'm just going to paint this in with some greens. I'm sorry for any bouncing that's occurring. I, I really can't help it. Every brush stroke makes that darn gooseneck bounce. I've got to find a better setup. 
I found something online because I broke my other tripod head as I told you and I think I'm gonna get it it's really inexpensive and um, I think it'll be good um, it also comes with a tripod you can get a 50 inch or a 60 inch normally I'd get a 60 inch but I think I'm gonna get the 50 inch because it'll be so much cheaper it's like under twenty dollars it's just a lightweight tripod it's nothing great nothing I would put a camera on I don't think just my phone which is also lightweight so I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and you guys can watch What a wonderful Okay, now I'm going to start on the flowers. Um, I'm sorry, when I'm doing the time lapse, it won't let me zoom in close. So, whoops, I just dropped one of my brushes and I can't reach it. Let me see if I can get it with my foot without ruining it. Ah, there we go. I've got tables all around me, so I'm blocked in. Um, for the flowers, I brought out my other palette because I want to use some purple out of it rather than mixing. I'd mix my own, but I need my quinacridone pink, which was not in my palette either. So I'm just going to wet these a little bit. Um, I've got my pink here and then my violets down here. I think that's violet and that might be moon glow. I don't want moon glow. And I got my cobalt violet over here, cobalt violet pale, what's left of it. So I'm going to wet those down so they constitute a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and start painting. I'm using my number three Rubloff Kalinske Sable Mix. And right now I'm just putting a pale wash of cobalt violet pale down needs to uh, reconstitute a little more. I hate using this brush for it because it's so soft. I need to get a different brush, but I've got a flat here that I can use to to get it moving. There we go. Okay, now let's try again here. I'm just going to do the whole flower first. Once I fill it in, then um, I can go back and add the other color to it. kind of like them light, although the photo I saw showed them being pretty dark. So I'm just going to, oops, that was not the right purple, I don't think. Nope, that was moon glow. I had them backwards. This is my permanent violet, blue violet. There we go. So 
just want to do this while it's wet and then I'm just going to kind of let it sit for a bit. Should have used a different violet. I'm going to go lighter. Dab that off. I'm going to go back in with some more of that cobalt violet pale which is almost a pink color and I'm just going to redo that. I think I have a little bit of purple left on my brush, but that's okay. No, I guess not. It's just more constituted now. And remember, everything dries lighter. some pencil lines on there I'm going to have to erase that I see. Now I'm going to use a little bit lighter mix of my cobalt violet, not the pale but the violet. Just want this subtle. That's much better because the other one was too drastic. Just slightly darker in the center. And then I'll go back after this dries. I see I missed a spot here. Working on a slant like this is diff very different. It's a little different getting my dexterity back. Okay, so I'm just going to let that one dry and I'm going to move on to another. Getting some more of the cobalt violet pale. Whoops, got a hair there that's coming loose. The nice thing, if you're new to watercolor, the nice thing about working on a slope is that you can get your colors to run down, but you have to wet that area first. See how my my um, paint has just kind of stood there? It's not really moving at all. It's just staying right there because I didn't wet underneath it, but the second I do that, it's going to draw it all down into that point and it'll stop there. See how that works? So you don't have to worry when you're working on a slope that it's going to run down the whole page. You would need it wet or you'd need so much fluid on a large brush that it would have no choice but gravity to pull it down if they were really large droplets, you know what I mean? So, gosh, I am so sorry about this shaking. Can't wait to get a different tripod mount here. It's a little too dark. Stabbed off my brush, dried it, and now I'm picking up the paint that remains and I can use it to pull it over into this area. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to take a little bit of my cobalt violet on my brush and I'm just going to dab it in the center. My paint is drying fast today. It's not super hot out. I think it's only about 80 degrees, but it's sucking up the humidity. Boy, did it rain last night. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted a video over there, the rain coming down. I also did it on my Facebook page, but um yeah, it was pretty crazy last night, the storms. And it was still lightning on one side of our trailer, and then on the other side, it was all beautiful stars. It looked so cool. Now this is a darker violet I'm putting in the center, and it's probably gonna swell out, which is kind of what I want it to do. 
just not too far. This one down here, I will do again, but I'm just gonna do the petals there. There we go. And I'll start on this last one. pretty much done here. I'm gonna put my writing on my card, but I wanted you guys to see this huge freighter that's going by here. It's gonna come by in just a second. Here it comes, see it? These things are so huge. You watch when it goes by this car over on the right, it makes the car look like it's so small. things are huge and when my husband and I go fishing out on the river um, I haven't done it in years but there are times when it gets really it gets really scary because there's so many freighters coming by and if you're not watching you don't see them coming up behind you and they come so fast it looks like he's moving slow but he's going upstream too or no, he's going downstream, never mind. But they are going fast and they push so much water. One time we were just seconds from getting hit. That was like 20 years ago, but it's scary at night because you can't see them. But anyway, that's the freighter. Zoom out and you can see them both. And this one will be for Father's Day and this is for our anniversary tomorrow. It's our 34th wedding anniversary and we were together four years, little maybe four and a half years before that. No, four years before that. And our um, other anniversary, the day that we met is the 21st of June. So we celebrate both on the 17th and the 21st. Sometimes we get mixed up and we miss our wedding anniversary and we celebrate it on the 21st, but um, it doesn't matter as long as we're together, right? Well, silly me, too much going on. This was supposed to be my anniversary card that were two peas in a pod and I put Father's Day on it. So I have it all backwards. I'll just have to tell him that I messed up. It's such a bummer. Oh, I guess I could redo it, but 
what's the use? I'm not going to redo it. I'm so bummed. It should have said happy anniversary instead of Father's Day. Ah, oh well. This will be the anniversary card then. I'll figure something out. <laughs> okay, well on this card, I ended up writing something about how it was supposed to be the anniversary card and that he, we were two, like two peas in a pod. But um, for Father's Day, I changed it to, um, he's the head pea of our pod. <laughs> God, that's so corny. Oh, but anyway... That's what I came up with and at the last second. So he's going to be here soon, and I have to get these put away. So um, that's it. And I'll figure something out for the anniversary card. I'll just write something mushy. So remember, everybody, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Have a great weekend, and all you fathers out there, have a terrific Father's Day. God bless you all. Bye-bye. What a wonderful world.